The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the March 3rd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show questions. Of course, please send those emails early. And in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, a mixed bag out here. The Dow 75, the S&P down 20, the NASDAQ 100, 246, Russell's up 8, semis are up 46, trainings are up 66, composite down 216, New York up 22, Wilshire off 280. It is a mixed bag out there. Are you confused? You're not? Uh, well, I am. Yeah, every now and then, you know, we get confused out here. But we're going to go figure out what these markets are communicating to us, or what they may be communicating to us. You've got gold down 17 bucks, silver's off 51 cents, lights we crude is up a couple of bucks, 30 year treasury is off almost one point, 30 ticks right now, trade out at 160.02. Lead the charge dollar wise, the upside, booking holdings up 26 bucks, a little over 1%. Uh, micro sectors, US big oil index, lots of three time micro. Uh, Verative Corp. Verit IV Corp, 13 bucks, 54 percent. Boeing's up 11, 5 percent. Dicom Industries up 10 bucks or 13 percent. To the downside, the leader is the trade desk off 81 bucks or 10 percent. Mercado Libre off 79 and change. That's 5 percent. Shopify 70, a little over 5 percent. Amazon 60, almost 2 percent. Chipotle down 51 or 3 and a half percent. So certainly there are things to look at. But I want to look at what you want to look at. And I don't know what you want to look at. Let's let's try to um, here's my latest thinking, uh, or at least what I'm watching. It goes like this. So we know that the Nasdaq is the uh, is the indice that is struggling. Well, how do we know that, Steve? Well, first, just show it. Show the chart out here. Here's our four core charts for e uh, the four uh, equity future contracts. And if you just take a look at panel number two, you'll see that's when that has had the biggest decline off of its high out here. So the NASDAQ is the one that's struggling. Its uptrend is still in place out here. In fact, each of the uptrends are in place. The ES, the NQ, the YM, the RTY. And you can see the different trend lines that I've got in here. So everything is still intact. And it may remain intact. We may just be in this like sideways choppy consolidation, one day up, next day down, and so on and so forth. And those become difficult to trade other than using intraday signals out there. But that's only one possibility that maybe that's the market that we're in. What I'm watching here, knowing that the NQ is the weak link, I haven't looked this up in the past week, but Apple used to be the number one holding. I think it still is number one holding in there. 10, 11, 12, maybe somebody in the den can let me know what the actual holdings, what, what Apple makes up of the NDX 100. But here, when we take a look at Apple, here's what we know right now. We know that the what I believe is the largest holding 10, 11, 12, 13 percent of the NDX 100 has formed a bottom. It has formed a TD nine count bottom. It has done this at TD nine count breakout support. And that's at 123.45. 
even today it's testing that 123.45. By the way, the bottom of its daily profile is 120.85. Now, yesterday was a very bearish message that Apple generated for us. So that, and, and before Apple started trading yesterday, I shared with subscribers what we were looking at, that Apple was likely going to go test the oscillator and change line, mostly because, well, one, because of the bottom, the TD9 count, but second, because that oscillator and change line had changed colors. It went from green to red. Now, when it's red, it tells me the price oscillator tells you the price oscillator is below zero. A falling price oscillator below zero is a very bearish pattern. That's the message right now. When you have a red line and prices trading below it, it tells you you have a falling price oscillator below zero. That's not so important, although it is important, but it's not as important as yesterday. Yesterday was a test and rejection of that. And that says that it wants to head lower. Well, it did that yesterday. It's doing that today. The question is, is it going to create an A to B equals CD to the downside? It already has one that's in place out here, but is it going to create an A? So there's really two bottoming signals inside of Apple, the TD9 count and the A to B equals CD pattern. But if price gets below that, well, then that says, hey, in the case of Apple, you could head much lower. And if it heads much lower, so too should the NDX 100. Much lower here in Apple could be 93.71. Now, we're not saying that's where it's headed to right now, but if it does close below the low from last week, in the case of Apple, let's give you that number. Sorry that my cursor here is not uh, cooperating with me. It is 118.39. So that's a number to have on your pad of paper. Now, if in fact, so if Apple does that, and you got that bearish signal from yesterday, it, again, we're just talking strategy here. That may, so this, should, this suggests that Apple should head lower. So if it does that, then it really makes sense to me what's going on, what went on in February and what went on in March. Would you like to know? Okay. I, th I heard somebody say, Steve, -o, of course, that's why we tuned into the show. Of course we want to know. Well, what the heck happened there? All right. Nice, nice, nice job there, Steve. -o. Uh, let's see here. That's not what I was going to show you. And I lost the chart. Come on. Come on. And when I say come on, I'm referring to me. I'm really talking to myself out here, but you already know that. You can see the kind of great conversations that, that I have with myself. Here's the NDX 100 chart. So now this is the monthly time frame chart for the NDX 100. Those of you that have been uh, frequent listeners know that during times of a pullback, we take a look at the uh, two, three, four bar knee jerk reaction lows. How do you come up with that? Well, I didn't come up with it, but I went back and uh, uh, I created a tool that said, geez, Louise, look at how cool this is. So this is a monthly chart for the NDX 100. The counts here that you see are different than the, uh, by the way, they're different than the uh, TD9 counts. This is taking a look at the current bars close versus the prior bars close. The minimum count that I can do out here is two. So that's why you don't see any single months out there. The single month that's in play right now, that's just because the current bar hasn't closed. But what you will see out here, get to it, Steve-O. You already have it. You already see it. You see the number of two monthly consecutive lower closes and then what happens and then it's a takeoff to the upside unless there's like a consolidation like there was back in 2015 out here but even then the two on a monthly basis the two bar knee jerk reaction low or three and there was one four bar and that was during the october no no that wasn't during the october the october by the way how about that last year at this time it was a two bar knee jerk reaction so the thought process is if apple in fact, does trade lower. If it breaks out that bottom, what we have here in the NDX 100 in March is likely a beautiful buying opportunity when the month is over. That two bar knee jerk reaction. Stevie Rhodes with TFNN will be right back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led 
led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that will take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. You know, so going along with that theory that you and I just, uh, that I shared with you, and it's just a theory at this stage here. Uh, we can see the NDX 100 right now is trading below the 2020 close. So no breakout mode at all here for the NDX 100. So if the theory applies, oh, geez, I don't have an A to B equals CD tool on this. We're going we're gonna to add that in. So if you give me a moment here, insert study. That's what it is. It's a study. And where did I put that? There we go. So let's go take a look at this. This is the potential that we'd be looking at. It's not in play. Well, it hasn't confirmed or anything just yet, but it would look something like this with regard to the A to B equals CD pattern. To give us a price projection in the 12,190 area, maybe 11,885, oh, sorry about that, 11,885-ish uh, uh, type range out there. In the case of the NDX 100, what we need to see is a close below 12,758.12. So just keep that in mind right now. That's just one of the We'll call it Stevo theories that we're sitting that sit right here on the wall. It all makes sense, and what it would do, folks, is create really a a great buying opportunity. Now, I say great buying opportunity one that should take us higher into May. So we go up for two months out there, and then we we'll see what happens in May. That's typically when we see some type of of high between May and, and July out there. So. Let's go take a look at some requests. Actually, a couple of things, uh, uh, some house cleaning. Yesterday, there were a couple emails came in very late. Uh, and I just remembered what they were asking about. And one was uh, Bitcoin, and they were looking for an entry point into Bitcoin. So here as we put up the March futures contract for Bitcoin, what we can see is it's traded with inside a bear structured profile. Price is tested and rejected its oscillator and change line out here. I've got wave number seven, that's letter G, that's led to the consolidation. So at this stage here, as long as Bitcoin can hold 46,415, that general area is your entry price out there. Your ideal entry price would be priced with this 
and this could be doing this, Bitcoin forming an A to B equals CD to the downside that would take you back to its breakout level of 32,590. So that's what we see when we take a look at the daily uh, time frame. And again, if you can, you, maybe you sent that email in early. It didn't arrive. These, these, these two that we're going to go take a look at here, I don't know when they're sent because of the in, uh, uh, ISPs out there. And sometimes they take a while to get to. But I didn't see those on, on my side on the email until about 151. One was 151, one was 147, something like that. Not enough time to really take a look. The other one was, I believe it's ticker symbol N-O-V-N. And it was really the same question, you know, where is an entry point out here? Uh, we can see that NOVN formed a top with a TD9 count, was bar number eight. And so your entry point here that you're targeting is about a buck 21. So dollar 21 is the breakout level that formed during that TD9 count pattern. Prices below the oscillator and change line. If 121 doesn't hold, you're looking at 47 cents. So that's ticker symbol NOVN. And the entry point at this stage of the game is 121. Let's see what patterns are going on should price approach that area. Okay, so that's the house keeping. We got uh, that taken care of. Now let's go to, we've got a couple of requests that are in. Uh, nothing that I see inside the Tiger's Den. So let's go to Tim's question. Tim writes and he says, I've been in Eastman Chemical. EMN is a ticker symbol. So let's go ahead and put these charts up on our screen. I uh, was wondering if new TAS profiles have formed on the daily and or weekly timeframes. Well, I, I don't know when we last spoke about this, Tim M. But the daily time frame formed a new profile three days ago. Bullish in structure. Prices traded above the top of that profile. So the number you're looking at there is 113.77. And it's also trading above a prior swing point which had 727,000, you're at 321 right now. So volume seems to be about the same as in taking out that swing point. Uh, so that's a positive. No new profiles in the weekly or monthly, prices above everything. So in the case of uh, Eastman Chemical, let's just go ahead and pop up. Wow, I did that again? How did I do that? That is crazy, crazy, crazy. What's going on with my cursor? What is going on? Okay, not yours to worry about. That's a Stevo issue, but it's an issue. All right, the daily time frame. Yeah, no topping signals at all inside of Eastman Chemical. So the daily says I'm moving higher. Uh, let's take a look at the weekly. The weekly does not. Uh, weekly, if it takes out the high of last week, that's another positive. Even though last week on a weekly basis was a bearish reversal signal, look at that oscillator and change line, how price held that. Folks, you want to learn this tool. You really should want to learn this tool. I'll teach you this tool. Just subscribe to Mastery and Probability. Do it for 30 days or less, or do it for 30 days or more. But learn the oscillator and change line. Really helpful. Really helpful. Monthly time frame chart, you've got a TD9 count going. This is the bar following bar number nine. So maybe there's going to be a high that forms during the month of March out here. But otherwise, uh, everything on Eastman Kodak, Eastman, yeah, Eastman Chemical, not Eastman Kodak, uh, looks very positive, Tim. So hope that helps you out. Thanks for writing in, and uh, have a uh, great uh, have a great day. David H writes in. David wants to take a look at FCX. So let's go ahead and put up FCX. I won't bore you all uh, because you you many of you were about to say, oh geez, Louise, somebody's asking about Freeport McMoran. There goes Stevo. We know what he's going to say next. And what was that? You're right. If you trade Freeport McMoran, you better be watching the Aussie dollar because the two, you know, if you take a look at their charts, you're not sure which one is the one that is moving price. Actually, we do know which one is moving price, and it is the currency pair out there. So you want to be able to make sure that you take a look at that. We're not going to do that, even though I just, you know, went through that spiel. And that's what it was. It was a spiel, a Stevie spiel. Now, if we take a look at Freeport McMoran, right now, price is up against a resistance level. And that's the top of its bearish structure daily profile. And that's priced at the 3568 level. Here at 3574. Hey, look, a close above 3568. Should you get it? That would be a positive and suggest that you go back to the highs from four, five, six, seven, eight days ago out there in the, uh, you know, close to the 40 and the 39 area. That's what you'd be looking for. What happens if price closes below 3568? Well, let's go see what other pattern might be out here. Well, I should have put that in. I didn't. So now we're going to have to punt just for a little bit. Give me a moment while this populates FCX. Um, so on the weekly, if price if price fails to close above that, what we wanted to understand was, was there a top when it made its high out there on a daily time frame? So now, 
We've got the charts ready. Let's go ahead and expand them. These are the white background charts. In fact, we're going to start with the monthly first since that, well, as soon as it expands, I see it's doing all those other calculations on all those other time frame charts. That's why it's taken a little bit of time to open. So on a monthly basis, 39.30, which is where price found resistance, was its TD9 breakdown level for its TD9 count pattern out here. Boy, you got to love how this responds to the nines. That's a beautiful thing. Now, that says that there may be a top in place inside of FCX because last week, last month, I apologize, last month was the nine count. We know that the uh, bar following nine can be the high as well, so possibility to make a higher high. But uh, the monthly chart is just saying be careful. And price hit that at the TD9 breakdown level. What's the weekly time frame chart? Well, the weekly time frame chart last week generated Rhodes momentum indicator top. But price has not closed below the oscillator and change line. It needs to do that. That's at 3309. That'll change, obviously, as price moves up and down. But as long as price remains above that, what the weekly chart has given you is neutral. So you've got a topping signal on the weekly. You have a clear topping signal on the monthly. What do you have going on on the daily time frame? Well, the daily time frame also generated a Rhodes momentum indicator top. And FCX, even though it's trading just slightly above the top of that bear structured profile, its real resistance area is the oscillator and change line, currently at 3636. This might be making an A to B equal CD down. We'll look at the Aussie currency during this breakout here. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. So part of David's question was, is FCX making an A to B equal CD? And uh, David would like the uh, swing point from here on March, or sorry, February 26th to be the C point of that A to B equal CD. Of course, should that pattern unfold, it would look something like this with regard to an A to B equal CD out here using uh, David's uh, points, which I would also use. And I would say, FCX would make a move to 47.54. Now, we don't know if this is the pattern that is unfolding, David. We wouldn't know that unless price closed above 39.10. Is it a possibility? It absolutely is a possibility. But remember, price right now, we have to also understand what's going on in the stock chart, such as did it make a top? We took a look at FCX on my white background charts, and yes, we saw the Rosemont indicator. And now price is dealing with a bearish structure daily profile. So instead, what you really might have is an A to B equals CD to the downside. And that, I don't think, is what you were asking about. So there could be a small A to B equals CD to the downside. You wouldn't know that until you see a close below the low of February 26 candle. And that is at uh, 33.15. Now, before we even began looking at FCX, of course, I was talking about the correlation between the currency pair and Freeport McMoran. And voila, as we pull over, now in this case here, I've just got the uh, futures contract for the Australian dollar. And here you can see, in essence, the exact same pattern. Now, it didn't top with the same pattern. In this case here, top with wave number uh, seven, that's the letter G out here. But the same pattern that's in play that we just looked at FCX. In fact, the Australian dollar, the future contract, is also up against a resistance level. And that's the top of its daily profile. Now, this may be making an A to B equal CD to the downside. If that happens out here... And that holds, and it forms an A to B equals CD, which would either be in the 0 0.7414, 0 0.7584 levels out there. <coughs> that would set up a Gertley buy pattern. <coughs> and then that would be a nice buy into, or could be a nice buy into FCX. So whether or not the swing point out here that you want to use for the A to B equals CD is to the upside or the downside, I don't know. And either one could be the case. And at this stage here, based on the topping signals that we looked at and the way the Australian dollar is trading, that has to be some consideration uh, that you give. Now, if you're in FCX, do you close it out? No, you don't do that. Well, I can't tell you what to do or not to do. I could, but I'm not going to out there. But price hasn't broken through a key level of support, and that would be the bottom of its daily profile. That's FCX we're talking about, and that's at $31.41. So, David, I hope that helps you out with regard to the analysis of what the charts are communicating to us, both FCX as well as the Australian dollar dollar next question coming in from eddie eddie says uh do you think we are just retesting the lows from seven sessions ago on the nasdaq composite nasdaq composite looks like it is forming a head and shoulders pattern if you agree how much emphasis do you place on this pattern so with regard to head and shoulders patterns i can guarantee you eddie and everybody else you've never seen me show a single head and shoulders pattern out there it is not my bailiwick. You can find them everywhere. You can't find TD nine counts everywhere. You can't find roads momentum indicator signals everywhere. You can't find wave number sevens everywhere out there. Uh, and of course, you can't find head and shoulders everywhere, but you can find them in most places. I just don't use it, Eddie. Uh, and the reason I don't use it is because I have enough tools here that that give me all the information that I need to uh, for the uh, to. to allow shareholders to communicate to me the most fundamental thing what are they doing with regard to the stock now your other question was do i think we're just retesting the lows inside the nasdaq composite so let's do this here let's uh let's pull up the nasdaq composite and not uh is that the time? Uh, there we go, yeah. And not pay attention to the market profiles that show up here. They're they're irrelevant. Um, but let's pull over the NASDAQ composite. It's very possible. So the NASDAQ composite tops with a TD9 count and a Rhodes momentum indicator. Bust through, bust through the first level of key level of support, 13,535. Maybe headed to the next key level of support. That's at 12,465. Is it just testing that area? Could be. We're going to watch. Hopefully you caught the opening of the show. And what we're going to watch out here is we're really watching Apple for that signal. In the case of Apple, largest holding inside the NDX 100, it generated a bearish signal yesterday. It's really kind of neutral right now because you've got a valid TD9 count bottom, price of below a red oscillator and change line. This is testing its breakout level. But if Apple 
forms an A to B equals C to the downside, then so too will the NASDAQ composite. I don't, we can go either way, in either direction right now with regard to Apple. It's got a valid bottom. But yesterday's signal gives more emphasis to the sellers, to the bears. But price has to break through support and has to close below the low of that uh, nine bar count out there. So, Eddie, the answer to your question is I don't know. I, I wish I did. I don't know. But catch the opening of the show. You, you may have missed it because during that first segment out there, during that first segment, I went through a whole spiel. I don't want to go through that spiel again and, and bore people out there. But if you go through that, then you'll get a feel for uh, what is likely occurring out there. And Apple will be the chart that really just one chart, I believe, is all that we have to follow to get our answer uh, to that uh, specific question out there. If we don't have the answer right now, I'm not willing to guess uh, but I am willing to say that what Apple did yesterday gave us that signal that says, hmm, in fact, it says more than something to think about. But again, it's really still neutral at the moment. So, Eddie, that's the best that I've got for you. Uh, no, uh, you ain't going to get any BS. No, be, you know, that's before, before you ask Steve that question out there. So let's go to the next question out here. And this is from Eddie again. Eddie's got a twofer. I'm a little confused. Oh, well, I guess he did hear it. If Apple trades... 123 by tomorrow, would it be a buy point? No. No, 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 no. Well, if Apple holds, if it holds 123. All right, so back to the Apple chart. Let me, uh, yeah, we'll just do it here, AAPL. Let's get it up here on this three panel screen. And if it trades to 123, so the bottom of its daily profile is 120.85. And I apologize. I don't know what the where the 123 came to. Is it a buy? Again, Apple has both a top. It has a it has a bottom signal, but what it did yesterday was it rejected a real key level. It's very subtle. It's not that subtle for Stevie, but it's subtle at this stage here. If you didn't, if you just use an oscillator and change line, and you didn't color it, you didn't know whether the price oscillator was above or below zero, it wouldn't have the same meaning for you. One to, uh, the one-to-one -one has already been done, uh, I believe, the A to B equals CD pattern. Yeah, so 123, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bill. So, Eddie, that 123 has already been hit. It, this was a 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD pattern that formed out here. It was the uh, hammer candle on February 24th that confirmed that by the D point. It confirmed both a TD9 count and a by the D point. Now, ordinarily, we'd say, man, that is a no-brainer. In fact, many of you may be listening and saying, that is a no-brainer, Steve-O. You just don't get it. No, that's it. I do get it. And what I'm trying to help you to get is yesterday was a very bearish signal inside of Apple. If it was – now, but again, because it's trading inside this bullish structured profile, it's really neutral. I hope that's making sense. Uh, and if it's not making sense – uh, I'll uh, strive to be a better communicator, but man, you, you can already see at my age here, what's the chances of me becoming a better communicator? Yeah, I hear you. But I'm not a prisoner of my past, folks. I am a pioneer of my future. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Dow's up 131. S&P back 13. We'll be right Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
Are you grinding in the market but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader simply looking to make his job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter the path of least resistance is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Folks, that Dow up 115, S&P down uh, 15 points out here. So a couple of questions inside our Tiger's Den. Uh, I believe uh, one is take a look at the GDX. So S&P wants to take a look at GDX. Uh, what are your thoughts on a buy in the uh, GDX here? So, you know, we've got to take a look at both gold and the GDX in order to do that, S&P. So let's first begin by looking at uh, Goldilocks. So in the case of gold, yesterday ge gold generated a daily buy signal. Um, it's not doing really well today, that buy signal, but it still is a buy signal. So there's an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. I can't draw it in on this white background chart, but clearly you can see it. I hope that you can see it. So it completed the A to B equals CD pattern. It generated a bullish engulfing candle yesterday, which it's supposed to do. That says support is the bottom of that candle. That's at 1704.60. Now, price has tested and rejected that level. So technically, it's a buy. The question is, can price, if it if gold does move higher, can price take out that oscillator and change line? So right now, if you were to be long gold, you've got to watch that oscillator and change line like a hawk. It's red, it acts as resistance, and you just need to watch it. But right now, Jimmy, the daily time frame says, uh, yeah, you've got a buy signal in gold from a trading standpoint, not an investment standpoint, from a trading standpoint. If we look at a 30-minute time frame here for gold, see what we see at this very moment. Let's populate it. You've actually got really two bottoms. You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom on a 30-minute time frame chart that formed out here with this um, uh, morning star uh, candle. Uh, that was a Three River morning star. That took place at 11 o'clock this morning. So that's a beautiful thing. Price right now just consolidating with inside its daily profile. But odds favor that what gold's going to do on a short-term basis is make a run for its breakdown level at 1731.70. Now, if gold's going to do that, it's going to need a little help from its friends, uh, the king, uh, king dollar out there. So that would su suggest that the U.S. dollar is going to move uh, lower. So is the GDX a buy on a daily basis? Well, let's go take a look at the GDX charts. We know that there's a short-term buy signal. However, if yesterday's low gets taken out, that signal is waved off altogether. Okay? So we've got that pattern. If we take a look at the GDX on the daily basis, the GDX2 is something we could draw an A to B equals CD to the downside. 
So gold has it, the GDX has it, and the GDX generated a bull sash candle. And right now, as we speak at 145, you've got a hammer candle. Don't know what today's candle session will or won't be. But what you can see out here, S&P, even if you, if you take that trade, you need price to close above 32.14 at a minimum. If you get that, then you're off to 32.90, 33.99, probably at around that 33.99 area. You'd be looking at taking that trade off, likely. Because what you have to do is take a look at the U.S. dollar index. If gold is going to go ahead and move higher in an earnest way, a couple of things have to happen. One thing that could move it out there is some uh, shenanigans going on across the globe. And that's a real possibility. So let's not lose, uh, let's not lose that. Uh, based on the things that we've seen over the past couple of months here, that's a real possibility. Uh, uh, Militarily-wise speaking. Uh, there's also things that could go on overseas that uh, people just say, OK, man, I, I don't want to have any of my assets in euros, in pounds out there. And people just simply start uh, going ahead and, uh, uh, and bringing in gold out there. So that's another possibility. Or it needs the U.S. dollar index or maybe all three of those things to happen in the U.S. Earth to Mr. Bill. Come in Rangoon. Wow, bummer. So uh, production department, anybody? We're back. Okay, great. So uh, any questions? I'm just, just kidding. Just kidding. So here's what we're saying about the U.S. dollar index. I don't know when we lost the sound here, but the U.S. dollar index has got a really nice bottoming pattern. And the U.S. dollar index is suggesting this could be an A to B equals CD to the upside. And if this is going to be an A to B equals CD to the upside, SNP, do you really think that the GDX is a good buy? Or is it saying goodbye? So the GDX and gold, let me be very explicit here, both have buy signals. And they're all short-term buy signals at the moment. And I think that it will continue that way until we see something else take place in the U.S. dollar index. But right now, it's consolidating with inside its bullish structure daily profile. It's got a nice bottom, and this may be making an A to B equals CD pattern out there. So I hope that helps you out, SNP. But from a trade standpoint, yeah, I can see that for sure. But just make sure you use your stops. We had another question out here. This one is uh, about a 60-minute time frame chart. So let me get that populated. And that was the IBB. So the question is, does the IBB give a uh, buy signal uh, for the 60-minute time frame? We're going to go take a look at that. Uh, I'm going to also do this, IBB. I'm going to look at it on the 65-minute time frame. Is five minutes going to make a difference? I don't know, but I want to look at it on that time frame. And the reason is, well, first, going to look at that. I want to answer the question that was asked. But the 60-minute time frame out here uh, doesn't give me equal bars for a cash instrument, but 65 does. Well, here's the 60, though. Let's answer that question. In the case of the 65 minute, the answer to your question is yes. You've got a TD9 count and a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. But here's a perfect example of the oscillator and change line. So, Dan, we know that it's got the bottom signal. What price has been unable to do is take out that oscillator and change line, and it's red. So we know we have a falling price oscillator below zero. So it gets a little bit risky here. Now, the risk is, says, hey, on a 60 or 65 minute, it doesn't matter at this stage here. What's going on in the shorter term time frame charts? Is there any kind of a turn? Well, in today's action, uh, well, I don't know the answer to that. Let's go take a look. I don't think there is on a five minute time frame. Um, the answer is no, I don't see it. But you can also see a nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom this morning at 1030 for this time frame out here. So 152.08 is a level to watch. That's a five minute level to watch. A 10-minute level to watch out here. We're looking for the breakout levels, if there are any that exist. There isn't one on the 10-minute, so it may just be that 5-minute. Yeah, nothing here. TD9 count on the 15. So see how these short-term time frames for IBB generated these nice bottom signals out there? The daily time frame, though, what's the daily time frame? So what's not the short term. What's the daily time frame? The daily time frame says, man, I'm headed to 149.50. And why does it say that? So the short-term time frames were generating that same kind of signal, right? Yeah, bottom, but not enough oomph, not enough emphasis, not a build ability so far to get above that oscillator and change line. Here, 
price is trading below the TD nine count bottom. If price closes today, and it was bar the bar following bar number nine, 154.13, you're trading at 152.30. If price closes below that 154.13, you go down to the next level. The next level is the breakout area, 149.15, 146.25. So the daily time frames are saying, hey, you know what? I want lower price before I find some kind of a bottom out there. Uh, and the only thing that might change that would be a close above the oscillator and change line for the 30 minute time frame. That's at 153.41 out there. So Boston Dan, we don't have to go the 65 minute chart out there, but I do like using equally timed bars for making pattern recognition decisions, at least the patterns in Stephen trades. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so let's go to our next question. We've got a couple of them that have uh, come in. This next one is from Dan F. And Dan says, Steve-O, Dan-O, I'd, like uh, I'd like the best price to enter a trade on BSTO. So let's go take a look at BSTO uh, and uh, begin by taking a look at its, uh, what it's doing with regard to market profiles. It is trading below today 
Uh, the bottom of its daily profile, 32.22, assuming that it stays below that, suggests lower price. Two lower prices right now, Dano. The first one is 30.81, so not much below where it's at right now. That's the center of the weekly. And then below that, we're looking at 26.28. 2628 is the bottom of the weekly profile. Let's go take a look at the uh, other daily charts out here, see what kind of pattern was associated, if any, with that uh, high. And the answer is a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Nice little dark cloud cover once price got below the oscillator and change line. Let's go ahead and populate this out here. Uh, price moved lower. Now, today, if price could get below the low from February 23rd, and that low is 3085, you would have a TD9 count bottom which could be a bottom, but you, 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 you would see that by looking at the short-term time frame charts tomorrow, seeing some type of bottoming signal out there. But if price doesn't get below that, even though you get a TD9 count pattern, it's not a valid bottoming signal. And then, because price is trading below profile levels, this offers you a price projection in the 1927 area. So you asked, where is a good buy? Depends upon what price does today. Let's assume that it doesn't get below that low from back on the uh, 23rd. Then we're looking at 1927 as an area. The weekly time frame chart also showing a uh, TD9 count with price trading below its oscillator and change line. That gives us a $20 level, maybe 2628. And my goodness, time flies. I didn't get a chance to get to that second request out there, which was for TWO. We'll try to get that done tomorrow. Folks, thanks so much for being here on Wonderful Wednesday. I do hope you have a wonderful one. Stay tuned for two more great hours. I'll be back with you. I promise you, it'll be thirsty Thursday. Take care, folks.